Greetings, fellow seekers of the supernatural. I'll be your guide through the mysterious realm. In each episode, we'll unravel spine-tingling tales, explore haunted locations, and delve into the inexplicable. Brace yourselves for encounters with restless spirits, cryptids, and things that defy logic. So dim the lights, grab your sage, and join us as we peer into the darkness. Because the truth is stranger than fiction. Subscribe now and remember, the paranormal is among us. I forgot to put us on. <laughs> you got to add us. I was wondering. I was watching. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the show. How you doing, Krista? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I hope I get better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've all done it. We've all yeah, been doing yeah. that. So <laughs> I had it all planned. I was going to smiling big, and now I'm laughing and feel like an idiot. But oh well. <laughs> oh, well. Happy Saturday. How's your Saturday going so far? It's good. Took my kid good. to the movies today, and we went to dinner, and here we are. Godzilla and Kong? Uh-huh. I liked it. I thought it was good. My kid liked it, too. Really? Yeah, it's worth going to see. It's cool. different. Yeah. I haven't been to a movie in a long time. I keep falling asleep. Yeah, yeah I, we really don't go that much either, but we went to the, I think it started at like 310 or something. Yeah. But you know what? Why not? It's just she and I, and so we went over there and did that, and it was fun. It was a good yeah. time. Cool, cool. I will tell you this, though. I paid more for two popcorns and two sodas than I did to get into the movies. Wow. You know, it it seems like, you know, going out to any kind of entertainment, movies, uh, baseball games, hockey games, football games, you you know, you're paying an arm and a leg just to, you know, go to the game park. And Mm -hmm. if you want to get food or anything, I mean, you got to almost take out a, I paid $28 for two medium sodas and two medium popcorns. Not kidding. That's stupid. Wow. Yeah. For popcorn that, and soda. Really? It's fountain soda. So, you know, they got the big things. Yeah. And then popcorn. How expensive is popcorn? Yeah. No kidding. You know? <laughs> Did they let you bring little snacks in? I don't like, know. Because we, I remember when I was a kid, we used to, mom used to sneak snacks in her purse or even my yeah. wife would bring them in. I don't in, know. You know. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah it's <laughs> expensive. Yeah. But hey, we got a great show tonight. Uh, Ava Venari is going to be on here. She is, um, she does Reiki healing, crystal crystal healing, uh, exorcisms. Um, she helps spirits cross over, and uh, and she does uh, mineral science. Um, very interesting. I can't wait for this uh, this conversation. Um, in uh, in just a few seconds, but uh, before we get out to Ava. Um, Let's talk about Ashmore. That is coming up very quick. It sure is. And it's and awesome. if you guys if you guys saw Blondes and Booze last night, she had Jessica and Rachel on, and it was a fascinating show. Mm-hmm. They have great energy, and mm-hmm. uh, that's one of the reasons why why we uh we wanted them because it's literally every event that I have put on, Jessica Potter has been at every one. Mm-hmm. She's just she's just a great and vibrant and has great energy and. So yeah, she's just a given, <laughs> but yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good, good one because as you know, uh, Letitia Nunley, she also has very good energy. Mm-hmm. So um, it'd be, it'd be her first ghost event. And then uh, uh, awesome. yeah. It'd and be my it, first ghost event too. Sure will be. Yeah. You're going to yeah. be there. And, and Josh yeah. Herb from Malvern Manor, he's awesome. And Robin yeah. Terry, it's going to be fun. We'll the owner of time. Ashmore States. Uh, $85 a ticket. Uh, That includes uh, the daytime speaker portion, uh, pizza dinner, and the overnight ghost hunt until 2 o'clock or so in the morning. Yeah. That'll be fun. And uh, are there still tickets available? Yep. Yep. Tickets are available. You can go to uh, Eventbrite under Blondes and Booze. And um, I think it's the first event that comes up. But I can I can actually uh, here I'll find it and I'll drop it in chat if anybody's interested. Okay, awesome. Yeah, there are uh, spots available and there is um, uh, a hotel. What is it? Seven miles away from. Well, let me tell you. (laughs) So no, Um, there was, but they have something going on in that town, and it's a super small town. Mm -hmm. So the hotel was booked. So we actually, uh, because we're all going up Friday night, and I had to book like almost like thirty miles away at a hotel. Oh wow! In Mattoon, Illinois. 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, wow, that's. Unfortunately. (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. All right. So uh, go to Eventbrite and uh, Crystal is going to have the uh, um, link in the chat for you if you guys are interested in going. I know some of the the people in uh, chat. I don't know if Poncho's here. I know he's going. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be fun. Uh, get to meet everybody. Um, it'll be a good old time. Come on out to uh, Ashmore. And mm-hmm. also, if you are interested in any Paranormal Among Us merchandise, perhaps a shirt, there's the back of it. Uh, we can do pillows, keychains. Um, I'll have some magnets and uh, bottle openers uh, to give out at Ashmore. Um, I was weird to heard that real loud somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Uh, go to Purple Penguin Crafts and Creations, and uh, on the bottom of the page, uh, she has all of the uh, Paranormal Among Us uh, merchandise. So I'll click on that and uh, get some merchandise. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. And also, I wanted to, to remind you guys, uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, share it. I'm uh, 25 away from 400. Um, so Very cool. 400 before the end of the month. Um, so if you could uh, share it out, um, I'd appreciate it. Um, just another milestone. We keep going. Yay. So, yes. all right. It is time to bring out, uh, Ava. So there she is. Ava, how you doing today? Thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. From, uh, Los Angeles. Angeles. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, tell us a little bit, uh, where we can find you on the internet. Uh, I have your, uh, website in the, uh, show notes. It, it's just uh, the name of the company, the Elevate Institute.com. Awesome. That's the best way to do it. Don't forget the the at the beginning, though. If you do that, you'll end up somewhere else like a ghost. <laughs> the the. Yeah. Um, and I'm putting uh, your uh, YouTube channel uh, in the chat. I had it on the beginning. Um, sorry, I can't talk, yeah. type at the same time. <laughs> There we go. I'm a guy. I can't multitask. There we go. Um, it's out there. So, um, so th- again, thank you very much for taking your uh, Saturday early evening out there. I guess. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I'm um, like, uh, what two hours behind us? So right. So you're on what six o'clock? It's um, not quite the witching hour yet, right? Not, <laughs> there you go. Right. Uh, <laughs> speaking of witching hour, after this show at uh, eleven o'clock central, you can uh, head on over to uh, BMR's channel, and uh, Krista, mm-hmm. BMR, Tex, and Brandy will all be on uh, yep. later tonight. Um, anyway, well, since you said the witching hour, I figured you know might as well throw that out. There. <laughs> 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 so, Ava, you 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 do quite a bit of stuff. Um, how did you get into, well, what did you get into first, really? Let's start there. <laughs> Trouble. Uh, Trouble. <laughs> I, was, I was living a regular life <laughs> as an architectural rep. So I got to work with natural stone and construction and go talk to people all day long in, in big buildings and talk about their, their grand visions. And mm-hmm. that was a normal life. And at some point, I just got very sick physically and had to find my way through the alternative medicine world because I fired all of the Western medicine world. They couldn't fix me. And along the same parallel path, uh, my ex-husband and I were, were talking and he also was having some chronic illness and I went to help him, but he died. So at the age of 45, he passed away of a heart attack. He could not be revived. And then I realized he was talking to me in my right ear. Wow. As they were trying to revive him? No. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> he, he lived and died in Las Vegas, and I was here in Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my first paranormal experience. Yeah. Wow. 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 That's So So when he, he came to you and he was talking, what did he say? Did he? Well... <laughs> he was always a talkative yeah. bloke. He was a cowboy and, and he, he was very talkative all the time. And um, I just remember him saying not so much the specifics, but how glad he was that he could be now so close to me to help me raise the girls. We have two, two now adult children together. And he was, I can help you now. That's what he kept saying. I can help you now. And I'm like, oh, I know this voice. And I didn't want to hear it in life, let alone, it wasn't a good marriage. That's why it ended. But mm-hmm. this was, 
constant mm -hmm. in my ear. And I said, no, 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 this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. And this is when I started to seek help in this space, in, in, in the healing space and spirituality. Mm -hmm. And that was my first, my first foray into it. Wow. Wow. That is, mm -hmm. that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've never been personally haunted. It's quite an experience. You've <laughs> never been personally haunted? If you haven't ever oh. been, it's quite oh. the experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm learning that it is quite the experience. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad, by the way. It's it's all so far been good. Um, and and okay, where did you where did you go from there? Well, there just happens spiritual. to be. You know how life happens, and then uh, experiences follow up on the heels of the happenings. And so, in this case, I I found that um, divine timing was at play, and there was a spiritual and metaphysical school that was putting on a big fair. And I thought, well, perfect. I'll go down to this fair and I'll talk to a few people and see what they say about this little voice in my ear. And they all said to me, you need a psychic surgeon. You ever heard of that before? Mm -hmm. A psychic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the psychic surgeon uh, I was introduced to and she and I had a, a plan to, to get together and do this surgery to basically get my ex-husband out of uh, my auric field because it was draining me. It was causing physical ailment. Like if mm -hmm. anybody thinks it's loving that a, a, a person who you're either a family member or a loved one who passes away and they're like, oh, they stayed behind. Don't let them. Don't let them get the help because it will destroy your own physical energy. And that's what it was doing to me. Even if I wanted him there, it was not a good idea. So mm -hmm. we went uh, into this psychic surgery session, which lasted about an hour. And this is where I learned that I had a great deal of Claire's, you know, the clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentient, all of that was turned on. I thought these were experiences everybody has because I've always had them my whole life. Mm -hmm. But she was telling me that uh, the, the surgeon, she's like, no, that's not common. And, and so we, we, we realized together that I had some, some gifts that I needed to explore. And so she said she's never gone into a psychic surgeon session before and had the person on the table tell her the same thing that she's able to see in her mind's eye and and so that's that's how we got started very cool, wow. very cool. And, and before this you never had anything any inclination that anything remotely possible well well let's put it this way when i was a very young child and i was raised catholic i'm fully recovered now thank you and <laughs> the <laughs> i remember my dad telling me Eva, there's no such things as ghosts. That's what he said to me, five, six years old. And I'm like, inside voice, you know, you go into inside voice. And I said to myself, I remember this distinctly, like it was yesterday. I thought, hmm, who am I talking to then? You know, yeah. so I always had a knowing that there was more, but I was asked to suppress it. Of course, you know, when you're in that kind of environment you are told you know doesn't exist okay for my mm -hmm. livelihood i will believe you and i it wasn't until i became an adult that and i allowed for these things to develop and blossom wow Very and cool. use it for good use it for good yeah that's yeah my my official title by spirit is the spiritual alchemist and it's the use of magic and common sense and science you take all of those things together and you put them together for healing Mm -hmm. Anything that gets in the way of your sovereignty, that is my mission. Awesome. Can we step take a step back, though? Because I have never heard of the um, the psychic surgery. How does yeah. that work? <laughs> so have you ever heard of astral travel? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's the use of astral travel to go into a shared space meditation. And if you are you familiar with what a contract is? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, this is fun because I, I love to talk about it. So contracts are... Before we drink the wine of forgetfulness and take over a human form, right? So as spirit, we right. all get together with our buddies of, of soul, soul spirit uh, family. And we talk to each other and we go, how can I bug the heck out of you in life so that you have expansion and growth? And then here's what you can do for me. That's a contract, right? So you decide on this is this is where people go. How did I choose you for family? You absolutely did. <laughs> and, right. and this this is the havoc that you've agreed to to unleash on each other over your lifetime for your good. It's all for your good. Believe me. <laughs> so 
these contracts, they can build up if you believe in reincarnation. Some souls only come on planet once, you know, mm -hmm. they go through and they're like, done, I'm done, I'm gone. I don't want to do this again. And I don't blame them. But <laughs> then you have people like me who come in over and over and over and over. And you know it, you know, if you're an old soul, you know, you've been here a few times, you, you, mm -hmm. you can, you pick up on that. So mm -hmm. this situation between my now deceased ex-husband and myself, we had thousands of these contracts between us. And so in the contract room, you get to bring in all of your guides, your loved ones. You can bring in the, the big guys if you want to. You know, Jesus was there. Mother Mary was there. We brought in Buddha and Mother Teresa. Like she, everybody was there. <laughs> so we just like packed them in for support. You, know, you want to be able to have that support. So we're, we're in this space. You see it in the theater of the mind. You know, so it's not something you're stepping into physically and you're with your 3D body. You're here in, in, in your mind and meditating on this. And you're going through the contracts, anything that is no longer, it's null and void, right? So you want them all mm -hmm. to go away so you don't interact with this individual again. Like, okay, I've learned my lessons. I want to be done. Gotcha. Those contracts get taken and thrown into the big fire. So all of the contract rooms have a huge fire and then standing to the right of the fire place is usually a soldier of Archangel Michael. He, Archangel Michael is not present. It's just one of his soldiers. So he's there. And we were finishing up with all of the contracts, getting them sorted, getting, okay, we need to review this one. Nope. All this one goes away. And my ex, he was hiding some, he had some under his hat. He had some under his shirt. He had, you know, and I wasn't the only one seeing them. The psychic surgeon, she was seeing them too. Two 3D people seeing these things at the same time and communicating wow. with what was happening. I know, it's crazy. So, <laughs> wow. so it was at this point that we're close to the end and here is the, the angel and he turns to me and he says, all right, Eva, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. And I go to do what? And he says, I need you to clean off your ex-husband's body create the light to heaven and then move him through. And I said, you're the angel. Why don't you do it? And he says, because you're the human. Mm. Wow. And this was my inaugural uh, passing of, of, a, of a soul onto the other side and learned more about the power of the human body and being on planet and what it means for us and our right and responsibility to do this work. Um, in, in that flash of a moment, just three little words. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're the human. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, backtracking just a little bit, you said, um, you know, people have been, uh, the souls have been around uh, multiple times. I had a, a psychic on one time, our medium on one time told me that I'd been around 20 some odd times. How do you know? How do you know that they've been around? Our, well, a, n a number of ways, and it just depends on the communication that you receive from the other from the other side okay. of the veil. In my case, I have um, known. I knew that I was an old soul because I am pretty practiced at being a human. So if you come in, you ever thought this, watching other people, there were people watched, oh, and you're yeah. thinking, "Wow, Ooh. that person is new. <laughs> They're probably first time on planet, right?" And so you, you, you have the opportunity before you become human to do what's called emanation. And this is when spirits will show up at the corners of your rooms. Those aren't demons. Those are people being, they're preparing themselves to come in. And so they're watching and studying and saying, how do we be human? Well, the millennials, for the most part, didn't bother. They were like, all right, we're here. What do you want us to do? That's pretty much how. So they're new. They're new. Wow. That's sure explains like it too. Explains a lot, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so <laughs> for the most part, I should say. <laughs> but here's the cool thing. Whenever I've interacted with one, not to put them down at all, they have a very firm grasp on their magic. Like they know if it, they have been raised oftentimes in a very con, oh, what's that called? Conservative household. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, they have a knowing that they came in with without a whole lot of filters or things in the way in between to, to keep them from remembering. And so in a conversation with many of them, if I just point them in the right direction, have you ever thought about blank, blank, blank? And they go, Oh, is that what that means? And they, you can see it, their head, everything starts to just, you know, squirrel around and, yeah. and they, yeah. Wow. Very interesting. Yes. Very that much. 
explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went down a rabbit hole. I don't remember where I was going, but that was a good way to end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you, you finished off uh, talking about uh, the, the first time you helped uh, your ex-husband, I guess, cross over. Yeah. Um, let, let's go into that a little bit. Not necessarily sure. about your ex-husband crossing over, but um, you, you've done that a lot. Yeah, I, I like to travel. We were talking about that before we got started. I love yeah. to travel, and um, I spent some time, just for an ex example, I, I spent some time in England from August of this year, of 23, rather, and taking tours. And I found myself in several castles, and some of them are still, you know, like Kensington Palace has mm -hmm. a lovely couple of ghosts. And, you know, one of them was like, hey, can I go home with you? No, you can't. You gotta stay stay here. <laughs> so even in the afterlife, ghosts hit on people, huh? Hit on people, they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was down in Lewis, uh, Lewis Castle, and going up one of the spires because they have, I think there's three in that castle, but so this one's a ruin. And on the third floor, there's an archery um, windows, and so as I come up the stairway, there was three of them, and they go, "Milady," they knew who I was. I'm like, "Okay, hi." You guys want to go home? No, 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 we're good. We want, so I ask, you know, when I come across a, a ghost that was human, it's basically mm -hmm. they're, they're people that have just lost their bodies and they want to stay behind for some reason. And I call them earthbound spirits. And so I'll ask them, you want to go home? No, no, I don't want to go home. Huh. Or, or yes, I do. And, and, and then we go through the process. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through the process, how that works? Yeah, it's really simple with their permission. So you, it's like if a, if the earthbound is haunting a place and they don't want to leave, I have to uh, either respect that or manage the conversation and convince them why it's such a good idea to cross over. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you learn to sell ice to Eskimos when you're dealing with this. So <laughs> people get attached. They get attached. And so you find out the reason. Why are you here? What, do you, what can I do? Do you need the healing? Like, oh, I'm good. Or, or they do, or they need that conversation. So you have the conversation. Mm -hmm. Once you get to that place where you're in agreement, yes, we're going back. Then I do something that's it's it's like a scan. It's like taking a sieve mm -hmm. as, uh, and just kind of running it over the light body. And I go uh, top to bottom and forward to back. And this scans them to get rid of all the gunk because you've seen a pig pen on Peanuts Gang, right? He's mm -hmm. got all of that clouds. That's what they mm -hmm. look like in my mind's eye. That's what I see. So as soon as I do the scan, the little light scan, they get nice and bright and shiny and clear and beautiful again. And then they're able, like creating the light is a gift. It's not something you can learn to do. I have mm -hmm. asked spirit guides and I have asked Palladian channelers. I've asked that all and they're like, no, that's a gift. You just have it or you don't. And if you have it and you know how to use it or you're trained to use it, mm -hmm. you, you think about it. So for me, I, I see it. It's always over here on the left side of my body. It opens up and the person walks through it. Wow. Wow. And that's it. Wow. Pretty simple then. Sounds like. Yeah, you, it's very you, simple. Do you ever have spirits that are, they, they say they want to go cross over, but they're just, I guess, reluctant to? Well, here's a cool thing. that That's what that conversation is all about. So I kind of have to sell them on it. Yeah. Uh, there was a lady's home. She was in Nebraska. Uh, she had her, her house was on like ghost hunters or something like that. Just full, full of all kinds of things. They didn't know exactly somebody had hung himself in the garage. And then there was a, a original owner out in the, the, um, the basement. And then there was more, there was a, a fairy, there was a few other things. And I'm like, wow, your house is really busy. Let's clear this out. So we did. But in the meantime, the late, the very first owner of the house was the one who was in the basement's woman. She kept bugging the woman who lived there, the 3D real live woman, she kept getting bugged by this <laughs> original owner. Mm -hmm. Well, she That's all she had left. So I had to have that conversation. She goes, I don't want to leave. This is my house. And I go, I understand that you feel this is your house still, but you do know that you're no longer alive. She goes, I don't care. It's the only thing that I got in the divorce. Oh, wow. 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 And she had only started haunting the place when they the owners started to change the layout of the house and do construction. I've heard this a lot. Oh, we didn't have yeah. anything go on until construction started. Well, you're upsetting the ghosts that live there, that they believe the house is still there. So you have to have that conversation with them. And so she says, well, I don't want to leave. And I says, why is that? Because my ex-husband is there. 
That makes sense. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, I said, well, that makes complete and total sense. What would you yeah. like to do? I said, we have options. I said, let me share with you. I go, we have the other world where you can create something that's all yours to yourself, a carbon copy of the original house as it was, as you loved it. And her eyes started to get really big, really. I can do that. Yes, you can. Or you can go to heaven and do the same thing, but you'll be with your family, your friends, and your soul group minus all of the personality mishaps that you experienced while you were here on earth. And she didn't believe that, but she liked the idea of going to the other world mm -hmm. and creating a, a duplicate. And I, I gave her an out and I said, if you don't like it, you can come back and tell me all about it. Has she been back? Only once to tell me how much she loves it. Really? Yeah. Wow. So what is this other world that you're talking about? Yeah. Um, this is, so let's, let's, let's have some fun. Rumor has it that there is this other world where we, for every positive ion or particle rather in the 3D world, there is an opposite negative that is called the tachyon, right? So the tachyon field would be, an, it's unstable here in our world. But in the other world where you go into multidimensional space and time, you have this negative version, not negative as in bad, I mean like photo negative version of the world. And let's tie this into something so it's tangible. Think of the Lord of the Rings. And let's just imagine for a second that the whole thing is real. And do you remember that the elves were leaving and was becoming time of man? Mm -hmm. Where were they going? Okay. To the other world. Right. So it's a place where a lot of people go. They don't realize they are there when they meditate and they travel and they're going to the other world. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. 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 My reality is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on. I got to put your... Uh... Did you post the wrong link? I posted said? the wrong link. I'm not having a good day today. <laughs> that multitasking, um, it's going to get you every time. It, it will, you know. I, you know, I just, I don't know what happened. I guess, I guess it was my day job that got to me today. Um, that that's, you know, as you were talking, I don't know if anybody, if you guys have seen the TV show, the Netflix show, um, The Good Place. Yeah. I was kind of picturing that when you were when you were describing the other world. Totally could be part of it. I know that they they are considered purgatory, right? Or hell? Isn't that uh -huh. the storyline? Is it yeah. that's hell? Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's a good version of it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. When I when I think of hell, I actually don't. I think it's more about bad decisions we make here while we're in the three D. Yeah, consequences. Bad yeah. decisions here, and I've lived through yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in the eternal burning fires of of the, the hell damnation. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, there's the right one. Should be coming up soon. Yeah. Um, and, and also before that, before you came on, we were talking about um, exorcisms. Um, yeah. You said you just got off the phone with one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess you can do that over the phone. Well, I think yeah. It, it, so the only reason we have spice time space continuum is for our 3D body to grow. <laughs> for anything on the planet to grow and support us, right? So if we go outside of the 3D into the spaces where we are multidimensional, um, we can lose time and space. And so we can actually affect change mm -hmm. in the ether or through the ether, mm -hmm. using it as a, a transport, if you will. So I don't have to be at a physical location in order to heal somebody or a or clear a house or talk to a, a, a ghost because when I'm in the same room as a ghost, it doesn't. They're in a mult. They're in a different dimension as well. They're not in a three D. Otherwise, I could poke them. They'd have a body. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, stepping back, uh, real quick. Cool hand has a question. Do we have to return after a time in the other world? Ah, yeah. You have to come back to your physical body. For sure. So if you're still human, living a human experience <laughs> as a being in a body and you decide to astral travel and don't do that without having some spiritual practices of 
um, protection, spiritual hygiene in place. Otherwise, you'll do some sort of um, ayahuasca trip or something and you'll, you'll throw yourself out into a very scary place. That's where you pick up demons and then you'll have to call me, which you can do that if you want to. But <laughs> let me save you some money, <laughs> some time and trouble. And, and you want to do protections and make sure that you're grounded and make sure you're working with your mm -hmm. angels or your your guides, your loved ones, your higher self, whoever it is that you work with, work with them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you can. You can go into the other world. But here's the thing. If you decide that you want to leave this body, um, the physical body will break down and start to to decay. And there. So a, a roundabout story of that my both my daughters were very they woke and they awakened at the same time i did but they decided not to go down the path of, of of this work like me but we all got the opportunity to receive information and really build up our confidence around our clairs clairvoyant clair audience clair sentience, all of it and my younger daughter she has the ability to um to declare not a clair she can actually see the um the entities. And in this case, she was in a dream contacted by someone who was no longer in his body. Spirit was up on, I think it was Neptune. And he had heard of me somehow in the spirit world and thought that I could take his spirit and put it into a new body. So she conveys this to me the next morning and I go, what is going on? Uh, mm -hmm. with, with this guy. And she says, he wants you to contact him. Yeah, he came to you through me in the dream. So I immediately was able, that gave me the permission slip to just tune into him. And I go, what, what, what do you want? What are you going? I'm on Neptune with him. And he, and he goes, oh, I want a new body. And I go, where do you think I'm going to get that body? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't right. leave your body for too long. Otherwise people like this will want in your body and steal it. That's a violation. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, that's a violation. I said, where's your body? He goes, it's in a coma in New York. It's in a hospital. Wow. 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 And, I, and he goes, if I go back to my body, it's going to hurt and I'm going to die. And I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to start all over again. And I'm like, I can't help you. That's not my gig. I'm not a dark magic person. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Pretty crazy. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's some light stuff <laughs> where's, your, where's your body oh it's in a coma you know it's in a coma yeah, yeah blame them for not wanting to go back i mean yeah yeah so don't leave your body for too long you must go back to it there's no time limit you can sit in meditation for an hour a day if you want to but just make sure you are protected if you're magical if you're in the wiccan world make yourself sit on a magic circle like really make sure that you're protected that's all i want to say about that and, and you had you mentioned uh spiritual hygiene yeah can, can you talk about that a little bit yeah a lot of people will find themselves going into places uh with without protection and so for example when i did the uh exorcism before this podcast i prepare the house so the house is is grid sealed. I've done my own prayers of protection. I called upon my own angels, my own spirit guides, my own elemental beings. They're all with me in protection. And when you're doing big work, big elementals and protection shows up for you. Um, so you just have to ask for it. So that's one. All the way down to just working simply with a pendulum. Clear yourself, do a prayer of protection, clear your mind. There's there's postures, there's things to know about before you delve into this world. Don't just play with it. It's like opening up a Ouija board is a portal. Don't mess with it unless you know what you're doing, unless you're trained. And that's, that's the biggest, mm -hmm. uh, most important lesson. I've heard so many people, simple story on the pendulum also ties in with having an attachment and a human um, friend of mine. She bought herself a pendulum off of, uh, I think it was one of those vintage stores, a vintage uh, furniture shop. And we're talking about that. She goes, I think there's an attachment. Again, permission slip allows me. She, as soon as she mentions it, I can go and, and check this, this pendulum out. She goes, it's in my bedroom. Let me go get it. I didn't even need her to bring it out to me. All of a sudden, here in front of me is a 17-year-old boy, blonde hair, kind of tall and lanky. And I go, hey, you must be what's attached to the pendulum. And he goes, yeah, I think somebody spelled me. Somebody had placed him his energy into that. And so I went through the process. Do you want to go home? 
He goes, yeah, absolutely. And this, this whole conversation happened really quick mm -hmm. and checked out. He was human, made the light, sent him on. He walked through. And then my friend walks into the living room again with the pendulum. She goes, there's no Mar energy on it. I think he's gone. And I'm like, yeah, I just sent him through. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you are buying stuff, sage it. If you're bringing it home from another place, sage it. You know, do your, your, your spiritual hygiene really well because it it will affect mm -hmm. your space it'll affect your your livelihood your home they'll still it'll infest itself and then you'll end up with more than just what you started with then i'll have to come in and like there'll be layers <laughs> there'll be layers yeah. of things happening yeah right. um right. somebody i work with um her daughter comes by the store and we're going to meet market uh comes by the store after uh, she gets finished with high school and um, I saw her one time go down in the basement of this place with a Ouija board. Oh, and I'm boy. like, okay, really? We're going to do that now? Mm. So, and how's that basement? <laughs> yeah, I, I, from what I understand, it's, it was haunted before. Oh, that's beforehand. why she went down there with it. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I, I don't know what, I didn't ask any questions about what happened down there and, and stuff. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll find out eventually <laughs> when I go down there and things go flying off the shelf at me. Wow. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, the uh, so doing the exorcisms, how when did this start for you? I, I was trained a <laughs> little bit, little bit, little bit until all of a sudden I'm, I'm working with with grand um, enemies, if you will. So, gosh, I think that the training grounds was being able to distinguish. So I was given opportunities to distinguish, is this an earthbound spirit? Is this an elemental? And then of course, when you go through the training of being in, in mystery schools, especially you're introduced to all of the different types of entities that are out there, elementals, entities, you know, what they are. And you learn to recognize them just like as if you were walking down the street and here comes your friend and you recognize their face. So it becomes something that you learn the skill set. You learn how to recognize and identify the energies. And so once you have that down, then I noticed that different uh, helpful guides started to different, more powerful and protection guides started to show up in my etheric field for me. Uh, and that was the clue. That was the clue. So it was June of last year. So I've been been with with dragons for almost a year now. Wow. And the first thing they do when they introduce you is to, to themselves to you is they show you their eye. This is a well-known thing within the magical community. Anybody who works with with uh, with dragons will that's like the first thing that dragon does. Now I didn't have this in my experience, and I certainly didn't really believe that that was something that could happen. And who are dragons? And what what are you talking about? Right. Right. <laughs> But I had built up such confidence in my Claire's that I didn't doubt it. And then was able to take that information back to my 3D spiritual coaches and ask them about it. And they go, oh yeah, you do. You now have a dragon with you. So he introduced himself to me and I was on my way up to do a astral travel to the seventh dimension for a healing temple and meet my higher self there. This is a common phrase that I say amongst people <laughs> all the time in my circle of friends. And so I just take that and don't take it too much out of context. It was just something I was doing. Mm -hmm. oh, and, I, really, I don't want, want to stop. I got a question yeah, here. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you mentioned in your circle of friends. Yeah. When, when they, are, are your friends into this <laughs> stuff too? Yes, yeah, we're-, we're <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I end up finding my way to people, we, you know, like attracts like birds of a feather flock together right, as I'm right. saying for a reason. So I meet a lot of people who happen to be magical in all parts of, of life. They're hiding among you. They, they have driver's licenses and everything. <laughs> I mean, I, I can just picture me, you know, being with people at work that are, have no idea anything about this and oh, I, I hang on. I got to go to the seventh dimension. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Yeah. 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 It, it, okay. it is like that. So I'm, sorry, I'm on, on my way and I get there and there's my higher self. And, and I go, I think there's a dragon down in my ether. And he goes, oh yeah, he's there to protect you. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen smog, uh, the Hobbiton, right? So the, that mm -hmm. series, it's the 
the mm. largest red dragon around, like the size of a human compared to this huge dragon. Um, that was how big he was to me, is to me. And I go, what kind of trouble am I going to get into that I need that much protection? Mm -hmm. And that was my, my first clue that I was going to start doing exorcisms for real. Wow. Wow. So what, what, uh, can you talk about your first one? Do I remember my first one? Um, <laughs> there's been want so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh. Usually they don't show, you know, like in, in, in television shows, they show mm -hmm. up as very dramatic events, right? People are throwing up and they've got different colored eyes and their skin changes and everything. It's much less dramatic in real life. Usually... If I'm doing something like a, um, you ever heard of a soul retrieval? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. More. There's more. There's so much more. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> part part of what I call the reveal work. It's it's a session where we uh, restore rather. So the restore restore sessions are basically restoring your energy body to uh, that sovereign place where you're no longer being bugged by entities of any kind. And I was doing that work where it's astral travel to the person's body. I'd look at their chakras remotely. I'd look at their auric field remotely. Mm -hmm. At occasion, I would find things in the chakras. So if you've ever found yourself unable to speak, usually there's something stuck in the throat chakra. Or if you're having mm -hmm. trouble with fear, usually there's something stuck in the base sacral chakra. Base, Yeah, base chakra. So it's like there's all of these different clues that you can assign what's going on with person mm -hmm. and i started to find entities in there so one of my early ones i won't say first because i can't i really don't remember the first one an early one i was i was doing a um a, what's what i call a landscape reading a spiritual landscape reading and much like your background paul is like this this landscape i see that and i see the person kind of floating in, in space and i can see their body and their light body and all of a sudden, I could see what looked like a hand reaching through like the backdrop there and, and grabbing the person's throat. And this person had had a problem with being able to speak their truth. They could not defend themselves, right? And so this hand was there. And so I questioned it. I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, no, there's nothing behind you. You're fine. <laughs> so <laughs> scared the bejesus out of you. So um, the, the hand, I was able to identify I had learned the energy of it. And I'm like, ah, that's a demonic. And so I was able to call in the angels. I don't do it myself. Mm -hmm. you, call, you call in the guys. You call in the right. power to arrest, whatever, demolish, whatever needs to be done. They do. They take care of it. And, and it's done. So I'm the mediator. I'm the clear conduit through which command can be spoken and the energy, right? Because the angel said, you're the human. So it's not a matter of me actually doing it. I'm commanding it to be done. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Have you had any really difficult exorcisms? Yeah. Yeah, I can say that. There's there's times when the difficulty is not so much getting rid of the demon. The difficulty is getting rid of what I call the sticky spot that's on a human that allows the demon to attach. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fear, guilt, and shame. Mm -hmm. I could see why those would be hard to get rid of. Oh, man. If you have any of those, those emotions will block your energy to source God. Mm -hmm. And you will not feel sovereign. So, therefore, you are not sovereign. And you are susceptible. And when fear is making your decisions or from the place of fear that you are making decisions, you are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a big one. Do you ever circle back to any of your, I don't, what do you call them, clients or yeah. patients? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever circle back to some <laughs> of your clients that you've helped and, you know, just to check and, and, and things are still good? Things are still good. Yeah. If, if there's not, then I'm also trained as an advocate for battered people, women mainly. And so I'll notice if they need training on the, like, go no contact with your demon. There's a lot of that. So the only time they stick around for a long time is because the person is erroneously like they don't, they're, they're in habit of responding much like a person who's in an abusive relationship can't just seem to cut ties. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. because they're addicted to the relationship dynamics. And so that's what, that's what can happen if you let a demon mm -hmm. sit with you for too long. Yeah. It's an abusive relationship. Totally agree. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can create our own demons uh, or which also attract real ones. And, and I work with both. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Awesome. How long have you been doing this? You said, Oh gosh. I mean, cum cumulatively, even all the way back with the being an advocate for battered women, that was back in 2000, something four, five, something wow. like that. And started doing the mineral balancing work in 2010 and been doing spiritual work like this more, more than just dabbling mm -hmm. since 2019. Gotcha. Very yeah. cool. Wow. Very cool. Um, let, let's get into the uh, the Reiki healing. I, I had a, a, a Reiki healer on uh, one time, and I, I found it was very fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. He was from, from England. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to kind of explain uh, the, the, to our audience what, uh, what, it, what it is first. Reiki is the harnessing of the Christ consciousness energy. And we're bringing that from source through our body's chakras. And it's a one-way energy to heal specifically to heal right jesus was known for hands-on healing mm -hmm. he would say i think there was a, a comment that has been truncated out of the bible it says be healed and think on it no more that's the reiki energy coming through his hands so it comes through your hands and you're able to place your intention as a healer on parts of the body to allow healing you're not blasting that's i think that's an interesting western reiki type of med, uh, mentality we're not blasting anything with energy. We're creating a essential, what I call an essential love space where healing is the only thing that can happen. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's, yeah, it's a, magic. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend who, uh, she had a nine to five job in Vegas. She used to sell houses and quit her job. And, and now she's a Reiki master and teaches all kinds of stuff and doing really well. So, Yeah. <laughs> Ricky's a real thing. And if uh, you mentioned that you were doing um, something that you were working in architect, correct? Oh, yeah, I did that. So, you know, before you have that spiritual tap on the shoulder that says this is what your life's mission mm -hmm. is, uh, you, you kind of have to make a living. So right. <laughs> I was a tech. I was in tech industry for 10 years, the first 10 years of my um, professional career. And then I switched over to, in the 2000, the IT bubble burst. So I went through the whole Y2K project and helped successfully move people away from the explosion that we are, we're all expecting. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. Yeah, that never <laughs> happened, but you're welcome anyways. And then, <laughs> and then that's when I moved into construction. So uh, my first degree was in interior design. So you can tell I have a lot of interests. And a lot of interests kind of have led me places. What the commonality in all of this stuff is a high technical mind. So I'm called, I'm like a tech intuitive. And so I can see systems. I can see how they work. I see how things go together and how mm -hmm. they affect one another. And so that first 10 years was in tech. And then the second 16 years was in stone. And then I had a crossover of six years um, doing this work as a side hustle while I raised my kids. I wanted them to be graduated from high school before I decided to go out on my own. And right. because my, my ex, their dad had passed, so I didn't have any support. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was it. I had to have the mm -hmm. job and the side hustle. But when, when my ex passed and I received the phone call from the hospital, and that was a tap on the shoulder. You need to be the health practitioner. We're going to, you're going to be a healer. Um, if yeah. you don't do this, we are going to bug the ever living crap out of you until you actually do it. <laughs> and, and so that's, that's what happened. And they um, don't joke around. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. They're, they're more than willing to use a two by four, <laughs> make you leave your job, make it so difficult. Yeah. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Did you have any problems leaving your job and, and doing this? It, it, it was funny. I did put off leaving the full-time job. I was uh, recruited by a company that wanted to up-level their brand. And so that turned into a toxic situation to the point where they paid me to leave <laughs> because I was dragging my feet on, on this business, on doing this work. And Spirit was like, no, 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 you need out of there. We're going to make it difficult for you. And they did. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. wow. And just made the jump. That's cool. Yeah. Um, 
Also, crystal healing. I, I kind I wanted to get into that too. And and you do tarot card reading. Yeah, I mean, if you're an energy Good reader, Lord. you're you're going to be attracted <laughs> to all of this stuff, and they're just tools, right? So they're tools to be able to to rebalance the body, to heal something, or to get a message for someone. Mm -hmm. um, one of the very first anointings that I had was in an astral travel. A friend of mine comes up to me, and this happens to me a lot. Maybe maybe people in the audience will resonate with this too. But I would get healers come up to me and saying, "My guides have told me that I need to give you a session." This happens to me all the time. Wow. Yeah, some sort of uh, um, anointing or some sort of like advancement you need to get here. And I just didn't know it. So their guides were telling them to do this. So one of these people was a crystal healer and she combined also what are those essential oils and uh, the singing bowl and all kinds of wonderful senses were at play. And she puts me down on this uh, mat like a massage table. And this is much like what I do when, with my clients now today. And so she put me down on this, this table and she, you, you go into a, mm, what feels like a meditation, but it ended up being an astral travel. And I'm finding myself in the etheric space and it's kind of very dark. And in my mind's eye, I'm there and here's a table and an old man across from the table sitting down and a huge book just sitting there. And he closes, takes the book silently and he closes the book and he hands it to me and he says, he goes, this is now yours. <clears throat> and I go, great. What is it? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, this is the Akashic records. And I'm like, mine. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of the Akashic records? You're familiar with this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this would be uh, like your written history of all things that have ever happened to you is happening now and what may happen yeah. in yep. the future. Yeah. Yep. So. It, uh, I guess Peter at the pearly gates with the book of life, right? That is yeah, the equivalent. Yep, yep. I've heard of yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. So there is one for not only every body who's ever been human, but also for every space, every place, every planet, every solar system, mm -hmm. and every multiverse portion of all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what he conveyed to me. He's like, no, 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 not just for you. It's for everybody and all space and time and the entire multiverse. And I'm like, great. Why do I need that? For people who are not tuned into their own messages, mm -hmm. I receive them and then provide. And that's usually nothing to do with who you're going to marry, where you're going to live, what job should you take. It's none of the vanity questions that we all love to ask. This is what do you need right now for your next step? And that's what you get told, whether you want to know about it or not. <laughs> the spirit will always deliver the message you need to know. So right. that is a combination key holder of the matrix. Yeah, that, you could call it that for sure. Wow. Interesting. It is. It really is. It's all intertwined. It's all intertwined. And you want to hear a fun story? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So, last year, <laughs> no, as no, I was, no, 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 just forget <laughs> yeah. about it. Um, I always ask. So when doing these soul retrievals, so a soul retrieval is when you have a moment in your life and even a past life, we talked about that already, where you had traumatic event. Maybe you, um, well, your life got ended, you were in a battle and somebody cut mm -hmm. your head off or whatever. So that leaves a portion of that soul body behind. Mm -hmm. Where? In the time-space continuum. And there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. It's in the past, it's in the gone. It's, oh, it's part of the Akashic record. Okay. Cut to somebody in Kentucky <laughs> who's watching a recording of a, of a ghost that's mm -hmm. coming up in their place over and over again. And it's the last moment of their death. And they wonder why. Like, what's going on? What's going on? Right. That's it. So you can heal hauntings if you heal mm -hmm. a person's soul. So the soul retrievals actually go out to the ethers, to all space, like what was the, the key to the matrix? Yeah. So mm -hmm. all of the little pieces of the soul start to jiggle and they come back. I command them back to the person's soul body so they can be a complete soul again. Okay. And the, guess what? The little, the hauntings disappear. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So it's all, it is truly all interconnected and mm -hmm. it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I actually OPR 357 said, key holder of the matrix. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. That's very cool. It is. Um, so you're the, the, the tarot cards. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. 
<laughs> What's your question, Paul? <laughs> uh, uh, how long have you been doing that? <laughs> Uh, I was attracted to them from the age of 20. I was uh, living in Vegas and no, I was not a stripper because that's always everybody's first question. <laughs> so, <laughs> or a dealer. Um, I, I know, yeah. right? Neither, neither. I was a medical transcriptionist of all things. That's, that's what I ended up doing. It's like a type super fast. Wait a minute, so, wait a minute. They have regular jobs in Vegas? Come on. <laughs> I apologize to anybody who's from Vegas. <laughs> love you love. yeah so i was at the library and they happened to have some tarot cards for sale there and um, i was just instantly gravitating i'm like oh these are kind of neat what are these all about i was 20 mm -hmm. and so i bought a pair and a uh, pair i bought a deck and just started to play with them i had no inclination no training nothing and mm -hmm. i just i was just learning about them and over time i've now been reading them for 30 years it's just i've learned it's not only the meaning of the card because there's a classic meaning of the card that's associated with the placement in the spread mm -hmm. but there's also your own intuition and your own guides that come in along with the keys to the matrix right so you're able to take in those messages and apply that to the reading for a person and really give them some valuable insight as to what's going on and i love the look on people's faces when i out them <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> How can one get a hold of you if they're interested in a reading and oh yeah, or, best way. So yeah. I, I have I have a wonderful relationship with my cards too and, and the different decks they mm -hmm. want different messages to be sent. So I have all of those different exclusive spreads on my website. You'll find them at the elevateinstitute.com and go to the services menu and then find the tea time tarot and you'll see uh, videos, what, who gets tarot readings, what questions right. can you ask? And then all of the different spreads are there. Very cool. Very cool. And same thing. If someone's having a haunting, that's where to go to. That's the same place services menu. You'll find all of my stuff there. The service cool. for a haunting. If you feel like you're possessed and you just want to have a conversation with me, <laughs> Uh, yeah, just to, it's it's easy just to go to the very bottom of my homepage and it says start here. Get on my calendar. I offer a free 20 minute phone conversation. I will hear you out probably longer than your doctor has ever done. And I'll let you know what I think is going on and what I can do to help. And if I can't help, I will make a recommendation. Awesome. Very cool. And do you prefer I mean, do you prefer doing in person clients or do you does it matter? There are in-person things that I can do only in person. For example, the, the Reiki is a specific Reiki that I developed. I called it Infinity Reiki using stones. You have to be present. Um, the crystal healing, you have to be present. The um, soul activation, you have to be present. So there's a few. And it, those are listed on the services menu as in-person services. <laughs> So you'll see all Makes of those, sense. how much time it takes to recover, because that's important. Right. You, you want, you know, some of them you want to do in the evening hours, which are great to do in the evening, because then you can just pass out for the night and, and, you know, rest from it. Because some of these healings, they seem kind of funny to do. And then when you're done, all of a sudden it hits you and you realize how effective they've been. Yeah. Well, do you ever do like gallery readings or anything like that? Gallery readings, um, you mean like um, at expos or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was at the Conscious Life Expo oh. just recently, and then I usually get on stage uh, to talk about all of this. I do a, a talk called The uh, Elevation of Consciousness, The Three Keys to Ascension at the Soul Search Fairs in all over Southern California. So I do, I do find cool. myself in expos often. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Now, before you you had mentioned that uh, you you travel to different parts of our world, um, do yeah. you do is that for um, expos and and business or or do you just move around because you can work? Anywhere? Yes, <laughs> can I say yes to both? <laughs> yeah, I, I love, love sure. travel. I built built my business so that I can travel and work at the same time. Everything that I can do, except for the in person stuff, but. You know, if I'm traveling and you're in, I'm in an area where you are, then that works out perfectly because then I can do the in-person stuff too. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll make sure to coincide my travel with some sort of expo talk or you know, getting on stage or so something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Very cool. You, you do many of those throughout the years? 
typically one a month uh, uh, from August of 23. I started in Glastonbury and I've been speaking every month somewhere in the world. Yeah. Really? Awesome. Where, where's your next one at? If, if somebody's in that part of the country. Well, I was just in Carlsbad on Sunday. So last Sunday, it's been only six days mm -hmm. now, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the next one, I think I might be in Phoenix. But if you go to the Soul Search website, Soul Search, I think it's Expo, soulsearchexpos.org or com. Anyways, search, Soul and Search. <laughs> if you search that, you'll find their, their calendar. I'm usually at one of the Southern mm -hmm. California or Phoenix locations. Interesting. Awesome. awesome. So, I mean, Helping people like this, uh, especially with, the, well, I guess any of this, that, that's got to make you feel pretty darn good to that, that, that see people come through the other side, one way or the other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how, how, do, how do you feel after seeing, you know, a, a spirit successfully cross over or uh, an exorcism successfully taken place? I don't know what the word is for that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the thing is knowing who I am, where I come from, who my star seeds are, what I'm here to do, that makes all the difference because mm -hmm. once you cognize all of that and now you're doing the work, it's not just gratifying. I mean, you're meeting your quota, if you will. Sure. Like it's, it's your best day at work every day. That's how it mm -hmm. feels. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I hate to put you on the spot here. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Would you mind doing a tarot card reading? Oh, sure. What do you want to know? Don't, you know what? The cards will tell you what you want to know, but you can okay. ask a question anyways. <laughs> I don't know what kind of question I have. Let's yeah. see what the card says. I want to see what the... Okay. All right. So I'll do a three card reading. And the three card reading is, is pretty simple. So it gives you the, the what is of a situation is the first two cards. And then the last card is the outcome card. And I won't spend too much time clarifying because I can talk a lot <laughs> about what messages need to be heard, but I can give a smattering and it may apply to both of you. It may apply to one of you, it may apply to one of the listeners because there's a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. So let's see. All right. And I'm using the, um, this one is called the Hermetic Tarot. There it is, Hermetic Tarot. Okay. So I, I am a believer in, in Hermes' work, the great simple human truths of the seven principles of our life. That's kind of my Bible. And um, it's what most religions, almost all religions are based off of these principles. And so these are the cards. Yeah. And I'm kind of a collector. Uh, I have more than 40 different decks. I don't use them all. I know I, it's kind of, it's, it's crazy and stupid at this point. I, <laughs> so many. All right. I don't know why, but I'm nervous. <gasps> Cause you might be found out. <laughs> Someone's in their head. We got eight of swords. Okay but it's gonna turn out fine. So <clears throat> what we have, Princess of Swords. So someone's in their head about something that they're seeing uh, either online. So this is the Princess of Swords, which is typically a, um, a spying card. You're looking up somebody, studying about somebody. This is the learning about another person. And the Eight of Swords is about being in your head about it, really feeling like there's, um, a sense of, I feel trapped by this information that I have found out, but it's meant to empower. So the information is always information. We should always take the mm -hmm. emotional stuff out of it and see the information for just what it is. And the result is a six of pentacles. And whoops, I, I disappeared. I'm not a ghost. I disappeared. <laughs> How the do we know that? <laughs> Yeah. I, mm. So <laughs> six of pentacles is always about, uh, Equal, give, and receive. Six is a, a balancing number, right? So at the bottom is kind of curved and it's always seeking balance. So mm -hmm. six of pentacles is about being able to give and receive. So somebody is studying up on a person to see if they're the right fit for them. So I'm getting, this feels like a love reading. Interesting. Yeah. And we're both married. 
Yeah. To other people. Somebody in chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it could be somebody in chat. So there you go. Awesome. Very cool. If this rings true to anybody out there, you know, just uh, yeah, say something. Yeah. Yep. I heard a growl. I don't know. You that... heard my dog snoring. My oh, yeah. Dog. Yeah. He's yeah, yeah. snoring. I hear that... your dog snoring a lot. He's that was really not a demon. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Poncho's been eating a lot. Watch <laughs> it, Poncho. <laughs> I'm sorry, what were you saying, Eva? Oh, when I was um, giving readings over, giving, I was selling readings at the Conscious Life Expo back in February. And this woman sits down across me. She goes, kind of coy. You know, she's very reserved. And she's telling me she wants a reading. And so we, we do a three-card spread like that. But I clarified. I added, I brought in a bunch more cards. Mm -hmm. And that same page of swords came out. And along with some other cards that meant me to believe she just told me she was divorcing and okay. i go oh and you found somebody already and she goes oh i feel so exposed <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that was what, really cute what what is the weirdest reading that you've had oh um weirdest reading i mean i've done so many um All I can say, well, weird is I find it interesting that the, the tarot cards can bring out information that people think is just buried down in their subconscious mm -hmm. and nobody would ever know about. And I've brought people to tears before. So mm -hmm. to me, that is that is weird. The, the other one that I thought was weird, somebody was actually asking me the question about how to decorate their house. And I looked at her and I go, you know, spirit's not going to take time to tell you this stuff. It's going to tell you what you need to know. And that answer also, whatever I gave her, I don't remember what it was now that made her cry. So I think it's, it's interesting that we don't know what it is mm -hmm. that we're wanting to ask, but spirit mm -hmm. knows what we need to hear. And that to me is weirder than any, any, any results. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they know everything they, about us. They do. Uh, that, that, yeah, they do. Um, you know, Jason was saying that uh, he's curious about having a reading, but I mean, with, with so many people in the in the chat and and around here, I mean, would that you wouldn't be able to just focus on one person, would you? I could. I would. It would be a one on one. So we would set okay. that up, go to the the services page, and and I could do it live with him that way. Okay. Yeah. It would just be hard with other people around to get an accurate on one person. It, it could be done. Yeah, it could be done. Okay. You just have to get the in tune with the person. I didn't. I didn't narrow it down to just one individual. I did like the collective read. So yeah. yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I find that 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 whole thing about love and trying to find what is equal, give and receive, is common, especially right now when we have the largest population of single midlife adults ever still wow. trying to date or have given up on dating and keep dating the same people in the different meat suit is what I call it over and over again. And that whole experience also can lead to health problems and demonic possessions and attachments. So I, I talk, I teach on that as well. It's like a one-stop shop for personal development. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the woman of many hats. Um, right. Now, now, the reading that you you gave was for someone you were you thought were was uh, seeking a relationship or interested in someone. It it looks like it looked like someone was checking out or studying another person to see if they might be a good match. Did you get a hit? Somebody say, "I'm single, 41 years old, curious about having my reading, please." Yes, okay. <laughs> that, I mean, that could have been it. It could have I mean, been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could have been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That seems pretty darn close. Close. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. several people in chat too. So we don't know their personal lives, if they're, you know, married, single or whatever. So. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, if it's not a love relationship and love can, can transcend friendships, right. Too. So 
Maybe mm -hmm. you're looking to get into business with somebody and you're doing your due diligence. That's another way of interpreting a spy card mm -hmm. is the due diligence. You're looking them up on Facebook, seeing what their politics are. How do they handle observations versus right. getting into fights with people? Like, what are they like? And you want to know that before you, you know, get into bed with somebody, even in a business sense. So right. this could apply across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's cool stuff. Yeah. Now, there's Reverend in front of your your name. Is that uh, it, kind of explain that? Um, I'm an ordained minister, but only because I wanted to to do hands on Reiki, and I'm not a doctor, and mm -hmm. I'm not an esthetician. So the only way around that was to become a minister. Okay. <laughs> so I did, and then lo and behold, I'm getting trained uh, by angels to be a um, you know an exorcist unrelated to any any uh exorcism churches mm -hmm. so taking this down further in the rabbit hole this is what i think about on my free time i thought you know <laughs> catholics they're known for the exorcism stuff right every movie you've ever seen the it's the catholic priest who comes out with the little collar and right? the, the mm -hmm. bible and the, the crucifix and everything and um i i was curious are exorcisms only in the catholic religion and the answer is a healthy no, it's not. It's in all religions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they all have ceremonies, rituals, and procedures of their own. Um, and um, it's interesting. Mine are very similar. It's just I don't have any idols. I don't use yeah. any any props at all. It's all it's all done with the divine partners. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, this has been very fun. Very informative. Oh, good. I'm glad. Very yeah. interesting. Very interesting. Most definitely. Yeah. And uh, one more time, here is her um, YouTube channel. I'm sure I put it in the right spot this time. <laughs> You'll find a lot of stuff on health there. Won't be a whole lot on exorcisms, but it's at least a way to get a right. hold of me. Get a hold of you. And, you know, you know, like I said, you can do those over the phone or, or in per person if you're not in the Los Angeles area. Um, how far would you travel to do one of these? <laughs> <laughs> I've gone I've gone from Peru all the way to um let's see the farthest I've gone is Italy though on the on that direction I haven't gone past that but yeah phys physical wow. healings or yeah if I'm in the area we'll mm -hmm. you know have scissors we'll travel that's uh, very cool I can do it <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. So you got uh, a couple ways to get a hold of her on her website or on her, uh, see her on her YouTube channel. Um, and, you know, make sure you subscribe to, to her channel. So I appreciate you uh, coming on, Ava. It's been a blast. Thank you for letting me share all my crazy stories. <laughs> they're not crazy. They're fun. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Um, I appreciate you guys turning out uh, uh, in chat and everything and watching. Um, have a great night. Have a great Sunday tomorrow and rest of Saturday. And uh, whenever you watch this, hope everything is going good with you guys. Yep. Um, and next week uh, we have uh, Tom Franklin coming on from uh, Eye of Jupiter. Yep. Um, always an interesting, fun show when uh, Tom's on. Mm -hmm. um, he was the uh, originator of the uh, Bigfoot farting. He was, uh, and it happened on my show. And yeah. on your show, yeah. <laughs> like like James James Gilliland, he talks about them too. Really? Bigfoot farts? No, just Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we talk about Bigfoot farts. We, that's another rabbit hole. All right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Um, and we'll see you soon. Be safe. And, good night. Uh, have a good night. Good night, everybody.